So the first shade I'm going to go in with is Still Shot. And I'm going to put that all in my crease. Also, sorry I sound like a man. I kind of woke up like two hours ago. But, wow, this is really, this is really a pigmented shade. I think I'm going to go in with a little bit of Baja. Is that how you say it? hope so. And then kind of focus that more like right in the crease. This is kind of blending up into my brow bone. But I want to have Baja like really close to the crease line. So I'm going to take kind of like a skinnier brush and do that. Mix it in with Still Shot. And then I'm going to go back in with Still Shot and then keep kind of blending that up too. All right, we like that, it looks good. I think I'm gonna do Good As Gone, which is like the deep dark brown shade, and just do a little bit here and a little bit here on the lid. These colors are really pigmented. Wow, that's a lot. Wow. Like that's why I don't even think I need to cut crease this because honestly, the colors are so pigmented, they're just gonna go right on how I want them to, so. And I mean, there's a little bit of fallout with this, but like, I don't really mind fallout that much because like it's an eyeshadow. So like to me, fallout isn't that big of a deal, but to some people, I guess it's kind of a lot, a big deal. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to focus this on the outside of the lid and then on the inner corner. Kind of. Well, not the inner corner, but like the inner lid. That's a weird vocabulary. Okay. In with Baja and just kind of keep blending the crease to make sure the orange stays there. And I'm going in with Good Is Gone again and just really packing it on the lid. And leaving a little space in the middle. I'm going to go in with like a thinner, more precise brush and kind of like take Good Is Gone and really like draw a line where that color ends, a really defined, sharp line. Just to kind of act as if we did cut crease it, like what it would, it would have the same effect pretty much. So yeah, just literally drawing a line. Next I'm taking some concealer and just doing a little strip right in the middle where this is an open space still because I didn't leave as much space as I thought I would. And then, yeah. So that way whatever shadow I put there is really gonna pop. I kind of messed it up a little bit, but it's all good because you can fix that real quick. So now with a more dense brush, I'm going to go in with Big Sky and put that on the lower half of this cut, like this uh, concealer. And then I'm going to go in with Wanderlust and do the top half to kind of have like a gradient effect. So here's Big Sky. It's a really pretty like green color. That's really pretty. Hope you can still see it with this lighting. Ooh, that's pretty. That is a really pretty color. And then I'm gonna go in with the same brush with Wanderlust, which is the deeper kind of more forest green on the top. Wow, that's really pretty. I'm gonna take it and kind of like blend it, make like a C shape with it kind of. So now I'm going to go in with Riff, which is the color next to Good Is Gone. It's like the only kind of medium brown in the palette. And I'm going to go in and kind of blend the green colors in with the brown. To kind of calm them down a little bit. Because they kind of took over the lid. Which I mean, I'm not mad about, but... Alright, well I'm just going to pray that y'all can see me because my computer's acting stupid. But basically, I went back in with some more Good Is Gone and kind of added some more here and here. And then I'm kind of making like a T shape, like a T with the green and then like extending it out. So that's kind of the shape we're going for right now. And then I keep going back in with Baja 
and kind of putting that back in my crease just to make sure that green doesn't start coming into the crease and overpowering it. And I actually really like how this is turning out. It probably looks terrible on camera, but I really like how it's looking so far. And I keep going with my finger, I feel like for Big Sky, because I feel like that works a lot better than... Like, that color is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm taking my finger and just kind of like dusting out the edges a little bit. So I think to kind of define the crease a little bit more, I'm going to go in with my Urban Decay Heavy Metal liner and just kind of line just the middle part and see if I like that or not. Because I feel like since I didn't cut it like officially with like concealer my whole crease that it kind of just, you can't really see it that well. So I'm just going to add a little line. But nothing too heavy because I don't want to distract from the shadows that we already have here. Alright, I like how that looks just in the middle. I think it looks good. Alright, so... I'm gonna go ahead and add some lashes and mascara and I'll come back to you guys with the other eye done. I'm gonna go in and take some more of Baja and put that on my lower lash line. All right, and I think that's pretty much it for this look, guys. So. Yeah, here's the finished look, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about the palette some more. I really hope this is in focus. Also, sorry my hair is kind of ratchet. It's been in these braids for literally four days, and I don't really care enough to take them out, so. Um, yeah, but the Urban Decay Born to Run palette is, I think it is a 5 out of 5. The colors are super blendable. They're really pretty. Um, there are a lot of, like, they're... They're fun in different colors, but they're all very wearable, which I really like. Like, when I first saw the palette and the color selection, I was like, yep, I gotta get this. Like, and I usually don't say that about a lot of palettes, but there's a lot of warm tones. There's even some cooler kind of, like, shades over here, some more earthy tones. There's some more fun pinky red colors, and then there's a whole bunch of neutrals. You could, it's easy to travel with. It's not, like, too heavy for, like, packaging. It's... 21 times 0.2 ounces whatever that means. I love this palette. I think the packaging is pretty. The packaging is the first thing that kind of like made me want to get it. And then I saw the color selection and I was like, oh, yep. And then this beautiful mirror. And then it has that like little um, thing you can flip it back and like use it like that, which I think is really cool too. Because sometimes when you're like getting ready for like an event or something like that, like whenever I'm at a dance concert, it's kind of hard to be like this. I like to have it flipped around, especially if I have a bigger mirror in front of me. And I just really love this palette. The colors are so beautiful, so creamy. Like, all the colors, they just look so good. And, like, wow. They look good. And even the mattes are really good, too. The mattes are really blendable. Like, let's see, Hellride. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Those are terrible swatches, but these colors are amazing. The formula is amazing. And I 10 out of 10 recommend this palette. So, yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you're going to get the Urban Decay palette or if you're going to pass. What are some things you've heard about? What are some things you don't like? What do you like about it? You know, also down below because I'd love to have a conversation with you guys because I could talk about makeup for hours. I could talk about makeup more than I talk about myself. So, yeah. Make sure you go follow my makeup Instagram or there'll be more pictures of this look. And I have some mini videos with this palette coming up soon. So if you want to go see those, make sure you go follow me on there. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.